This is a message from the Emergency Podcast Broadcast System. Please listen closely for a very important episode of the Amish Baby Machine Pop Culture Podcast. Warning! The following podcast contains adult language and childish comedy. Listener discretion is advised. And now, please adjust your headphone volume to an unreasonable level and enjoy the most dynamic and electrifyingly entertaining podcast ever to conquer cyberspace. This is Amish Baby Machine. Hello, friends, and welcome to the most powerful podcast ever created, the Amish Baby Machine Pop Culture Podcast, starring me, Dags. The Amish Baby Machine Pop Culture Podcast is powerful, and tonight we do have a powerful show. We have two new co-hosts. No, they're not really new. Been here forever. Johnny Rage and Mike Rez. Welcome. Let's start out with Johnny Rage. Welcome, Johnny Rage. Hey, I found out pretty quickly that I wasn't uh, an essential employee. I guess with the homage baby machine, because I was uh, kind of discarded uh, during these turbulent times. <laughs> you find <laughs> out who your friends are. You really find out who your friends are during these turbulent times. But it's like, hey, ma, hey, Diggs, when are we going to do the podcast? Um, <laughs> and you just kind of he wasn't returning my phone calls anymore. <laughs> it's like, remember me? No, he didn't. And the next thing I'm, I'm turning. To the to the Facebooks and the internets, and I'm like, here's a brand new Amish baby machine. Please listen. And I'm like, oh, he's probably running some of our old stuff. <laughs> no, I tell you the James. truth, I, I try to get rid of you, but everyone on Twitter is like, oh, where's Johnny Rage? Well, I just bring it all the time, so I don't know why you'd want to do something like that. But and now, am I kind of am I supposed to train this Mr. Rez guy? Is, is that why? Is that my real job here? <laughs> he's eventually just going to take over for yeah, me. He's like, you know? he's like he's like the new worker, and you got to train him. In. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's never a good sign. All I need you to say to me is show him everything you do, and I mean everything. <laughs> so, Mr. Rez, I might keep some of my secrets to myself. Okay, that's all right. I'll just be in the break room if you need me. Just well, like that's any, usually where I am. Employee, so. You've got my job down then, bud. <laughs> and now Mike Rez. Welcome, Mike Rez. Tell the fans of Flock of Amish a little bit about Mike Rez and Mike Rez Radio. Mike Rez Radio is uh, who I am, I guess, on, on the internets and, and on the uh, radio world. Uh, I host a podcast and radio show called The 945 Show, and I interview a lot of indie artists from the Twin Cities slash uh, Minnesota. So if people are really into uh, indie music, uh, the 945 show is where to go. It also airs on Frogtown Community Radio, WFNU LP, 94.1 FM. Why don't you get your uh, internet plugs in, too? Where, where can the fans listen to you, track you, stalk you on the internet? Uh, Mike Res Radio. Search that on every platform, and I am there. We're on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Facebook, um, and, uh, TikTok once in a while. TikTok. Johnny Rager, are you on TikTok? No, but that seems to be like the new wave. Everybody's rolling with the TikTok, but I thought you had to be like 16 or younger. No, now the new TikTok. thing, it's all, it's all old dudes on there. Yep. Yeah, because they're looking at all the 16 year old kids that are on there. That's why. <laughs> Come on, Diggs. That's why you're on TikTok. <laughs> as far as you so. know. Johnny Rage. <laughs> now, Johnny yeah. Rage, me and you enjoyed uh, a movie on Netflix. And then uh, in the 800-pound tiger in the room, we need to talk about Tiger Man, Tiger King also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We talk, you want to talk about the platform? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, well, um, we can talk about that. But what else is – is there anything else on your mind? I mean, you, you did want a well, tour about – take a tour of the neighborhood and what's going on. Because we well, we're I mean, all in our bunkers right now. Now, my, my daughter yells at me because when my wife and I are together, all we talk about is the COVID thing. How about you two? How are you? Mike Rez. Yes. How are you? How, what are your topics of conversation with your wife 
Um, is it is it a priority? I mean, is that like the main focus, or what are you what are you talking about? We try not to make it a main focus, but it always turns. Mm-hmm. So the latest, greatest, I guess not the greatest, but whatever is coming up. Um, it's I don't know. I guess it, it's the topic of conversation, and it's taking over because it's it's such a big news story. I guess that oh. I'd say about ninety yeah. percent of my conversations throughout the day are about that thing. Yeah. Now, Dags, I got a question for you because it's a whole new lifestyle. The world as we know it is different. Every single day it's different. Dags, from where you stand today, what do you miss the most from you? I'm going to call it your pat, the pre-apocalyptic moment of life, uh, pre, <laughs> pre-COVID. pre That's easier for me to say. The thing I miss the most is the powerful gym. Working out. Good point. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, I need to go in there. You know, it's my fortress of solitude. I need to hang and bang. I need to put the steel on the plates, Whoa. man. That just get in there and just kick ass. The fans mm-hmm. demand it. That's what I miss mm-hmm. the most. I got to do this half-ass prison workout right now. So I, I do miss the it. working out. And I also miss going to uh, movie theaters. I enjoy the movie theater experience. How about gym selfies? Are you a big gym selfie guy? I did uh, take a powerful gym selfie, and uh, Johnny Rage said that I was flexing too much for the picture well he's now that he's on tiktok he can't he's always taking these selfies he needs them for tiktok <laughs> now you could you could be on there they have like doesn't your phone have like panoramic view or mm-hmm. yep and now digs we talked about the weight that i lost can you tell from the pictures now remember we're doing this all facebook remember it adds 10 pounds okay <laughs> <laughs> so how many cameras are on you guys yeah are you are you, oh. are you using a fish eye lens oh. or what is it <laughs> Powerful. Now, mr rez we did thanks and i argue a lot and one of the topics of conversation that came up and he actually did a twitter poll was men with beards and yeah. i see your you're wearing one. Sporting is that one. typical? Is that typical? Do you always roll with that, or is this kind of a COVID look that we should all turn to now? No, this was a. Uh, this has been the same thing for the last five years. I've had this thing growing in. It's gotten a lot grayer though. So okay, that's the only um, issue I have. Now, Bags and I both have different opinions about beards. I think beards. I've always said men are trying to hide something. Um, I think. Do you find yourself with a lot of food particles lodging in it? Or tell me about life with a beard. I, re- I, I find it interesting, especially when, as, as summer rolls around and you get the heat. I mean, what's it like in the summer with that thing? Johnny oh, Rage, Johnny Rage can't grow a beard, first of all. I've got one right now. See it? There's three hairs there's, there. There's something there. Yeah, I can oh, see Oh, my that. goodness. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry I cut you off, Mike Rez. Oh, no, that's fine. It uh, The summer gets warm, so you got to trim it. But, yeah, soups and yogurt and ice cream, it gets a little interesting. Ugh. Now, let me ask yeah. you, does do the ladies like you with a beard? Yes. They like me better with the beard than without the beard. Powerful. What's going on top Rez, there? Rez, no, I'm calling you Rez because no. we have. That's okay. Uh, are, you, are you married? Are you a married guy? Yes. Yes, I Okay. Am. So what ladies, he pluralized that, what ladies like you with the beard? Um, should be only well, one lady right well that's the only one that matters so yeah. she likes she yeah likes but you can't beard, blame so the ladies it. i mean look no. at them for god's sakes it's powerful mm-hmm. the ladies they're powerless they're attracted to it by his aura I mean, you can't blame them i can't no, no one and can I blame them no i wouldn't he just so you're saying days he just has that musk look and smell to him just with yes that he has a powerful natural the musk smell yeah, is okay. a powerful attraction. Right okay. now, what are we drinking, guys? What are we drinking? Johnny oh. Rage, do you have your tap water? What do you have? I have um this. Now describe that to the fans. Actually, it was the first thing that I could reach. It's a, it, it's actually it's nothing. I'm not drinking anything. I know you're useless, Mike Rez. What are you drinking right now? Um, what I usually have on these. And tell tell the fans a flash of homage. It's a uh, Rocky Mountain refreshment Coors Light. All right, I'm going to need you to hold that up. I'm uh, drinking right. powerful Dasani water right now. I'm holding that up. Fans, flock of Amish, hold up your beverage of choice right now. All right, cheers. God bless cheers. you guys. Rez, I call that Kurs. We call that Kurs where I come from. Yes. Kurs. 
Kurs. I go with the Kurs, I go with the Kurs banquet. That's what I like to roll with. Yeah, I don't have the original banquet beer, but uh, I'm all out of the champagne of beers. That's oh, that's cool. Johnny Rage's favorite. Wow, you yeah. strike a chord, my good friend. That's very. Why? What's up with the high life? You don't have any? Then get to. I the just liquor? don't have any right now. Yeah, okay. I got a. Tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow's the liquor store run. Okay. So it's what essential. would you do? What What would you do if they uh, actually said that liquor liquor stores were not essential? Would you have enough? Could you get by? Would you get trembling? No, I I'd, I'd have to do the uh, the emergency run. I could live without it. I wouldn't have to worry about anything. But uh, we have like a, a two day supply right now. Are you guys making any sense of that toilet paper thing? It's kind of settled down now. But what do you make of that? I think that's ridiculous. I was out uh, the last couple of days. And I still wasn't able to find it. I thought that was over. I thought we were beyond that. But yeah. I have a shit ton of corn cobs, if any of you guys need any. Thanks. Are you able to find TP? I got corn cobs. That's all I need. Oh, I thought that was no, a, I'm, I'm vi- a very bad joke. No, it's a real joke. Much like you. Now, I'm, I'm visionary. I know things. I sense things. I told you this was coming. So you, so you stuck, you stuck up did, on toilet paper. I did. Paper. Yeah. But also, I'm I'm. If you guys want to do any marauding, let me know. Because I'm marauding. a powerful, yeah, I'm a powerful leader. I'm much like you know on uh, a team. Hannibal, nice. you, Mister T. No, I'm all Hannibal. The, all those, yeah, okay. yeah cigars, so, gray-haired guy. Yes, yeah. the, yeah. the leader. Mm-hmm. Well, not if you but, don't have cigars. Yes, we do have powerful cigars. Everything you need, Mike Rez. Now, me and Johnny Rage enjoyed a movie on Netflix, The Platform. Johnny Rage, tell the fans a flock of Amish about the platform and your thoughts. Well, what else do you do in times like this? But you reach to Netflix to fill the void of, you know, um, you know, what, what once seemed like something you'd want to do is, gosh, don't you wish life would stop so you could just watch Netflix over and over? And then when that happens, you're like, when you're sick of Netflix, you know, it's time to move on. But we watch the platform. Uh, made digs. We you did the the investigative work. You found out it was actually a, a film that came out of Spain. Isn't that correct? España. Yes, you were right. Yeah. See. And I was intrigued by the trailer enough to watch it. And kind of bizarre. Um, glad I watched it, but it was about basically. Um, it appeared to be like a prison, but it was like a high rise or a hole. They never said if it went up or if it went down. And there was 333 platforms and there was two people per level. And this platform literally would enter from the top, work its way to the bottom. And when the platform came to your level, your floor, it was loaded with food. Okay. But you can imagine if you're in platform number one, you have a copious supply of food like Thanksgiving day. Well, with every platform, more and more of the food's getting eaten or ate. Forgive my grammar. Maybe you guys can jump in. And so eventually it gets past the first maybe 50 floors. And you can imagine all the floors below 50, 51, there and down, there's not much food left. So you spent your time in this prison or whatever this was. And then once a month you got moved, they would actually gas everybody so they'd be knocked out. And then while you were asleep, you'd move from floor. You hoped you'd go up and not down. But it seemed like they did a pretty good job where if you were at floor 177, the next month you'd be up to floor number seven. If you're at floor number seven, you'd be down to floor number 52. So you kind of got mixed up. And then that was your plight. And you'd see if there was any food available for you at feeding time. And, you know, it, it was kind of a bizarre film. And it talked about how the inmates behaved and survival of the fittest and different things popped out. And there was a little bit of religious tone to it. And, um, I'm still debating if I liked it or not. I have to be honest. You know, Um, it was pretty graphic. It was pretty gross. I mean, if you can imagine everyone in this prison eating the same food, so it would come down and it would just be scraps left. And at first there's two guys, there's like the new guy in prison and then the old timer. And the new guy's like disgusted. He's not going to eat. But then finally he gets hungry enough. He has to start eating. So it's pretty gross. I mean, they're eating that. And then it, and then it devolves into, you know, real basic things. You know, they're, they got to live together and get along together. And then weird stuff starts happening. They start attacking each other. And then they have, uh, 
I think it was pretty cool. It's it's kind of hard to watch because it's kind of gross. Did it remind you of the Human Centipede at all, or not? Or it's saw? Oh, or I thought I, saw? I, I thought the human. I, no, I thought it was. I thought Human Centipede was far worse and more. No, I mean, what did, did, what, I mean, what did it remind you of? Like Saw, or what did you think? Did it remind you of any other classic um, horror movies? Boy, that's a great question. But I'm trying to. I know Rez is just listening to us. So I want to get his take. And what do you think so far of what we're describing to you? Does this? Are you into that type of movie or not? Um, typically, I'm not, but I am intrigued by what the platform okay. did, is. Uh, imagine you, myself, and Dags lived in a three-story house, and you were served a plate of food, and you ate as much as you wanted to, and all your leftovers, even your bones that you spit out would then get shifted to Dags because he's on the second floor. There might be some left because you couldn't finish everything. Right. But Dags doesn't get the, the top picks. And he goes through it. And then finally I get to, well, imagine that with 333 people. And uh, that's kind of what the, that's not, that's the premise of this whole thing. And that's so it's, why it's definitely not platform. a rom-com. <laughs> yeah. It's not the feel good movie of the year. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah. Now Johnny Rage is he's into the horror movies and I'm not really, but this one's kind of weird. It's like it's almost sci-fi horror thriller. It's got a lot I never of I even I I don't even consider this one horror, truthfully. Yeah, that's a good um, question. I don't know how they, you know how when you go online and you look it up, and they describe mm-hmm. it. What would you yeah. th- what do you think they call this like psychological thriller or what do you think? Like a situational, I I don't know, but to me it's almost like a a uh, survival film things that we're fans yes. of, you know. Yes, Mike Rez uh, from the powerful Mike Rez Radio. We love survival movies, and this one, you're right. It's the ultimate survival. It's a cool. It's a prison movie. Everyone loves prison movies, right? And then, uh, and it's also kind of cool because it's a Spanish film, so they're not trapped in the Hollywood tropes, the stereotypes, you know, Johnny Rage. So, like mm-hmm. Johnny Rage can pretty much watch a movie, and he, he's going to know right away what's going to happen. But in this sure. one, it, it it's different, so that's why I liked it too. Yeah. Now, what's what's interesting, I, and Rez, whenever I I join Dags on a podcast, I have a really short attention span, and my mind jumps. So this is a moment for this right now. I just want to explain to the flock, we are actually doing this where we see each other. We are sequestering ourselves because of the fact of this COVID. So I'm in a remote location. Dags is in a re- remote location, and Rez is in a remote location, all for the safety um of of all of us but but podcasters instead of washing our hands we have to wash our mouths uh, on a regular basis but i see in the video mr rez you've got an old radio behind you don't you uh no that is a no. uh, what you would call a wardrobe oh like okay it's i'm not, sorry not a radio yeah i mean i can see why you would think so i mean the i thought we could have some cool material. talk about some old vintage radios Do you have okay, a lion so and a witch it. also oh I could go in there and find out. Do you want me to go in there, or is that a different episode? Johnny Rage, can you see what's in my background? Can you see that or not? You are a white boy, aren't you? <laughs> That's so small. <laughs> yeah. uh, warning. He's, na- he's I'm warning. I'm using up too much bandwidth. <laughs> oh, man. Johnny Rage. Tiny, you're a tiny little man, Diggs. Yes. But anyway, so... I- Diggs, in all fairness to Rez, I don't want to drag this on because he, I want him to join us. That's why we have the menage with 12 of us today is so he can join us. So I'm going to rate that movie. I'm going to give it a, a we do a buggy wheel rating system. Hmm. I'm going to give it a three, three or five buggy wheels. Whoa. I'm going to tell you right away. I had a hard time watching the movie because it was gross because he had this old guy just eating this food and making disgusting <laughs> food noises. So at first Ooh. it was really gross. And then I'm like, I'm going to sit through it. And then it had cool parts. The premise was really cool. I mean, you got to admit, Johnny Rage, that was kind of an original premise, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah, exactly. I mean, how many times are horror films kind of duplicating the other uh, movie that you saw a month ago or whatnot? But it was pretty original. I, I give him credit for that. If it is, I'm not even necessarily calling it a horror film. But it was an original thought. What really tripped me up was it was lip sync throughout the entire thing because yes. it was actually done in Spain. And I, I had a hard time with that. You, it, it wouldn't, you wouldn't think it would, but the lips didn't match the words, and that bothered. I kind of couldn't get off of that. Ooh. Yeah, I um, wish. So, yeah, you're right. I wish they would. I just had the original Spanish and the subtitles. Yes. 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 Yeah, sure. And my powerful buggy wheels. Uh, 
I'm going to, I'm going to go with Johnny rage. I'm going to give it three. Yeah. That's dead on. I think. All right. I looked it up. It's, it's uh, listed as a sci-fi thriller. Whoa. Okay. The sci-fi. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even mention the sci-fi. Hey, we've days. We found our Google boy. Yes. You brought powerful. in our Google boy for us. <laughs> powerful. That's nice. That's yeah. nice because um, he can make he can make me look really good. Because, Raz, I, I I forget a lot of names, and you can just quickly kind of lip sync them over to me. <laughs> I brought <laughs> Raz in because he's very intelligent. Yeah. So, see, in the original uh, Amish Baby Machine, we had a straight man, and then we had me saying the goofy stuff. And then now uh, Johnny Rage is so dumb, I'm the straight man. So, so we had to bring in Mike Rez, and he'll be the straight, straight man. Now we're going to bring in Mike Rez, and let's talk about the movie that everyone is talking about. Tiger, what is it? Tiger pants or what is it, Mike Rose? Tiger King. Whoa. Yeah. It uh, interesting, interesting documentary. You guys, do you guys usually watch documentaries? Well, I'll get into. I don't want to. Well, here's the thing with the documentary. The documentary. I used to think it was just a fact movie. It was a movie based on facts, but then I realized that they, in a documentary, they have to have a good guy and a bad guy, a protagonist, antagonist, and they can take raw footage and force the viewer to to feel a certain way, you know? Mm-hmm. So that all that BS being said, I, I kind of dig documentaries, yes. All right, now let me ask you this question. When you say documentaries, do you mean true crime documentaries? Is that what you're saying? Or documentaries in general? Just documentaries in general. Okay. Because, I mean, I, I'm, I'm big time into history, and I, I enjoy documentaries on historic events or historic individuals. The true crime thing, which I know is really popular right now, I'm not into that. There's so much on Facebook where people, there's so much crime that you can just witness opening up your Facebook page on a day-to-day basis. I don't need to relive the murder trial of the Mendez brothers or something to that effect. So, All right. So the Tiger King, do you want me to explain to the flock what, what, uh, yes, what yes, it's about? Yes, we do. Set it okay. up for us. Set it up. Set it up. All right. So the Tiger King is about, uh, well, originally... It was the the filmmakers were actually making a, a documentary or film about the illegal reptile trade in Florida, and it quickly turned into big cat exotic zoo owners um, in Oklahoma and in Florida, Florida. and South Carolina. So, yeah. and you kind of first you meet uh, Joe Exotic in Oklahoma, and then you meet uh, Carol Baskin in uh, florida who's sp- supposedly an animal rights activist who's just as bad as everybody else in the uh in this series um and then you have doc on in south carolina who's got his own little uh i guess you'd call it a sex cult that uh run- runs an exotic zoo basically and then you meet all these other characters along the way that uh there's really no good guy in this one really maybe some of the employees at uh, Joe Exotic's zoo, but that's about it. Man, what did you think uh, when he basically took homeless individuals who had nowhere to go and brought them in and gave them a job and put them to work, and yet at the, at the very end, they kind of turn on him? What, what did you think about that? Is, I didn't think the employees would do that to him. And no. One in particular. Yeah, I don't, think they, they, I don't think they felt they had a chance or had a choice, really, uh, except yeah. for to to testify against well they didn't all turn on him what's it what's the young lady's name uh kelsey is it they got her arm bitten off spoiler alert whoa spoiler alert yeah let me uh look that up here quick we got the list well there you know the spoiler isn't that difficult thanks because early on when you watch the interviews they talk to her before they even before you even know that she had her arm bitten off and she's sitting with a stub with a yeah. stub well, stub right. so you don't well at first they don't show it though it's kind of like when they always do documentaries like a guy in a wheelchair at first they'll show uh-huh. him just head and shoulders and then they'll pan back and show the wheelchair you know those right. kind yeah. of cheap tricks they do and they yeah, did but I that I can always sense that they did that yeah. with her though too you know mm-hmm. yeah no, Kelsey Safry so I I got to watch a couple uh bunch of interviews of the people on uh, David Spade's show and uh, online, and they interviewed everyone after the fact. And it's kind of weird because everyone has a different story. So what I was talking about, like the documentary, the documentary takes all this footage and puts it together however they want it to turn out. And it was kind of weird because you had the one reporter, he was doing, he was taking over uh, Joe Exotic's uh, internet show, and he was going to film a 
reality show on that. And then the the documentary team is filming them. So it's like this, you know, show within a show, which is kind of cool. And that's, that's what, I mean, the guy from, uh, what was that guy's name? The reporter that initially went out there and Rick, like Rick you Kirkman. said, okay. He loses all of his film footage. So he's screwed. He's out of the picture. What was unclear to me, who continued on with it? Who, who was it? Because, there was footage from the beginning to the end. And if the gentleman from inside edition lost all of his footage, but yet it kept the story kept unfolding in front of us. Somebody was videoing. Who is that? Who was doing that? Uh, the uh, filmmakers, uh, Rebecca Chalkin and Eric good. Uh, are you talking about like the, the people filming the documentary or cause I, I think okay. that Rick Kirkman gave them some footage of what he had already shot before the fire. Okay. Because, and again, maybe because I just power watched it and I just lost track of a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. But when the dude from Inside Edition, that reporter, when when his film footage was burnt, you think the story is over right there. But no, they continued on with more footage of what happened and, and so on and so forth. So does that make sense to you? Yeah, I know what or you're saying. That, and it's kind yeah. of weird to know... They didn't timestamp anything, so you didn't know what the order right. was. I mean, okay. they, they could have took things from years ago and put them all together. And I thought that okay. was kind of fishy, too, how his stuff all mysteriously disappeared. Well, they kind of explained what happened. But yeah. let's, talk about the, let's talk about the headliner himself. What do you two think about Joe Exotic? Yeah, what a, what a what character. I mean, <laughs> you can't write a character like that in, right. in a movie. I mean, that's Joe always, dirt. But this yeah, is my basically. question to, to this is my question to the both of you. Do you think the guy was as loose of a cannon as he portrayed, or 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 did you think that was just an overall act? I think you know he they played it up. Like I I saw those interviews on a David Spade show. You know, like one of his uh, husbands, the one guy with the missing teeth. Yeah, John. They, yeah, they told him to keep his shirt off all the time. You know, they wanted him to look like a hillbilly redneck. Right. Yeah. You know, right. so so the Joe Exotic, I'm sure they said, here, wear this purple shiny shirt all the time, you know? Yeah, see, now, to me, that's the type of dude that I think once there, there are certain people that if it's a microphone or if it's um, a camera, they get so intoxicated with it that they kind of break in a character. And I felt like he created this character, which was really, truly only a character that can, that got out of hand that with some of the things that he did, like shooting the sex doll, the sex, you know, with a gun, he was doing that to be funny, but that was video evidence against him that really damned him. But I really don't think he, per- I don't, I don't think he was capable of killing that lady. No, I, I got to ask you this, Johnny Rage, the fans of Flock of Amish want to know. Is this a character that you're doing right now? Or is this the real Johnny Rage? Well, I don't have a gun with me, Dags. Okay. You got two of them. Look at those guns. And, and I don't have a but blow up doll with me. There. Oh. You know, I have this anger res toward Dags. Maybe I ought to do exactly what Johnny Exotic did or Joe Exotic did and, and put dress him up like Dags, like, you know, <laughs> and put a bullet through it. What do you call those things that? When there's a president that, that they hate and they, they prance them around, there's a name for that. What do you call it? Uh, Ethology? Yeah, thank you very yeah. much. I'm going to do one of, of Dags, you know. I do and, I uh, do one of you, Johnny Rage, but we don't have enough raw materials. I just want, what, would it be like that big Trump baby doll? Is that what I would look like, Dags? Yeah. You know, the one in, in the UK that they put uh, up? Mike Rez, you're uh, relatively new to the Amish Baby Machine Pop Culture Podcast, the most powerful podcast ever created. What's your theory? Why do you think uh, Johnny Rage has so much resentment? Is it jealousy or what is it? Uh, it's probably some jealousy. It's uh, definitely the uh, the company that you that that's around you right now. Yes, yeah. powerful. Yeah. Hey now, now Rez, I got a question for you. Now, yep. you have a podcast, right? I do. Yes. Are, is there some bitterness toward Dags? Because he always says this is the most powerful podcast in the world. Power, power, power. Basically, he's taking a shot at you, like. You're worthless with what you do. I mean, do you ever take it that way or what? Um, well, I let my numbers speak for themselves. <laughs> uh, Powerful. Okay. 
he lets his numbers speak for himself. Yes. What about you, Diggs? What about you, Diggs? What about me? Well, I mean, in all reality, isn't he like the competition? You know what I'm saying? No, he he's he's a member of the flock of Amish. He is. Yes. Okay. There's no competition. Okay. It's just one big family. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of like the guy on Tiger King, you know, with all the ladies. Which one would you be? Oh, you'd be that doc. That yes, <laughs> yes. I'm the I'm the leader. Who is your favorite character, Mike Rez, on that show? Uh, my favorite character on that show, um, I think it was uh, actually that uh, that drug dealer, the one that was selling cocaine bags and snakes. <laughs> that was pretty <laughs> he, cool. He's the the most, uh, I, uh, you know, oddly enough, he was the most normal of of everybody they interviewed. How about you, John well, Rage? Who was your favorite well, character? Well, definitely the headliner. I thought the guy was flamboyant. I thought the guy was funny. I could tell he was uh, um, he was very creative. He was a uh, um, uh, showman, is what he was. Um, he did it in the name of his business. I, I'm self-employed. It's always about, I mean, any PR is good PR, and that's the way he thought about it, too. Um, he ran for governor. I mean, he did a lot of the things that I personally wanted to try to tempt myself. But now, when you guys watch this, Rez, I'll yeah. pose this question to you first. Did you find it compelling enough where you kept watching episode after episode, or did you watch it over a matter of maybe a week or so? Uh, it took me about three days, three or four days. I watched two at a time. So okay. I don't know if I could binge watch it. Uh, Thanks. The way how about some you? Some people did. I watched six episodes in a row and then finished it the next day. Isn't that telling? I, I, I did to tell you the truth. I typically don't like to binge watch, you know, because then oh. I start tuning out, but I kind of did it as, as like, uh, I don't want to start this. And the problem is with the internet, you find out right away. And I knew I told you this Johnny rage off mic that I'm going to go online and someone's going to tell me exactly what happened. So I'm well, like, I say, I said, I'm not going to let that happen. So I just cranked it out. I thought it was gripping enough where I actually binge watched it one after another, except the, the episode I struggled with the most was, was it Carol Baskin? Is that her name? Yeah. We yeah. didn't even get into the, Carol Baskin. The, the third episode. Where it was well, when her. they talked about her, when they were talking about her husband, I forget yeah. what they titled that episode. That one put me to sleep. I'm like, let's get through. I, that one was. They almost lost me. I almost didn't go into the next episode, but I did thankfully because the payoff was uh, the overall seven episodes. That one was no. The word is she had another husband also. She had three husbands. Yeah, that's what yeah. I heard. <laughs> oh, three husbands. Yes. Yeah, the first one was an abuser, and, and that's he when she uh, he Don. disappeared too. So. Yeah. What uh, you you making that up? No, I'm not. I, well, I heard it on the interviews on uh, one of the interviews. Which is kind of cool now because you get to see all the people in real time right now. What, what, what was the guy? What was the guy they brought in to? His name was Jeff, right, Mike? Yeah, uh, the big he- heavy wheeler. Yeah, yeah Jeff Flo. Yeah. So I just yeah. saw his. Do you guys remember when he was looking up uh, nannies? Yeah, yeah. The, he was looking for the hot ones. <laughs> so, so I just saw an interview of him just recently today, and his nanny is hot as hell. Well, he was. He, we know that. I mean, no, they but were, that wasn't. Were, so that wasn't made for the film. I mean, she's still there. They, sh- <laughs> they show her. They bring her out with the uh, with the his other lady friend. I mean, it's yeah, crazy. Cause, yeah, because they're 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 bisexual. And they're, they're swingers. They're swingers. Yeah. Yeah. So that I'm was. Saying, definitely I'm saying. The whole day, the whole I'm saying she was pretty Vegas. hot. So yeah. that part so was real. A, there's a, a uh, local connection with Jeff Flo. I don't know if you guys heard this. What's that? It was in the uh, city pages, which so the is the uh, Twin Cities. Yeah, yep. Yeah, well, yeah, Minnesota. Um, Jeff Lowe used to run a uh, a flea market in South Carolina, and the logo that he used was similar to the Prince logo when Prince was going by the symbol, and Prince sued him over copyright and won. Whoa! Yeah, cease and desist. Yeah, exactly. That's, uh, so cease and desist, um, or you actually had to shell out money. Do you know? He had to shell out money, but uh, he wouldn't. He doesn't say how much because I guess they sealed it in federal court. So under Prince. So what was the deal? What, did that guy have money or not have money? I don't think he did. I bet he never had more than two or three hundred thousand at one time. But he just liked to flaunt it like he was a high roller. Yeah, he but he played the part like he was the high roller, like he was going to save the day and take over that that zoo. 
Well, it's just like uh, it's just like rappers in those hip hop videos. You know, they show the house in the car. That's all right. rented. Mm-hmm. It's rented. Yeah, yeah, they don't own those cars in the house. So yeah. it's, it's, it's the, the old, same thing. They, yeah, it's the old thing. Is, yeah, just fake it till you make it. Right. I think it was the true religion jeans that that made everybody think he had all that money. Yes. Do you wear those, Mike Riz? Um, I don't, just because I can't find skinny jeans like him to to wear. Yeah. And then he had that front deliberate rip right at his pocket, roughly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And like he, that movie must have been filmed over the course of what two years, maybe more than that. I think it was four years. Wasn't yeah, it was four, four or five, five years. years. He he had like the same jeans on every day. Right? Right. <laughs> Did he ever change? He had one pair of true religion jeans. <laughs> That's the thing, though, with you know? that with that continuity and stuff. You know, you you wonder how much the director is saying. You know, wear this. Like I said, wear this pink shirt. Uh, you guys keep your shirt off all the time. You know. Right. Well, I'm certainly there. I'm certainly they don't say, can you say that? wear that same outfit for four years in a row? It looks real good on you. Well, you Johnny know? Rage, come on, let's get real. You have the same pair of jeans you've had for over well, five years. Hey, what I'm going to ask Raz here. What do you yeah. think is an acceptable, what is an acceptable length to wear a pair of jeans, a fresh pair of jeans? How long can you roll? And don't lie. I want honesty here. No, I usually roll about four or five days. You're not supposed to wash denim very much. I like this guy. I never wash the jeans. I let them disintegrate naturally. Yeah, well, the old Levi's, the original Levi's, you were never supposed to wash them. The denim. What was the re- what was the reason behind that? Uh, you because it breaks down the fibers when you wash them, and the old old denim, like natural denim, doesn't hold up very well in washes. I prefer to call them dungarees. Dungarees. Back then, back then they didn't. the The, the washing machine was the wife, you know, so it didn't have the rigors. Of the mechanical washing machine of today, so. Speaking of um, pants, make sure you check out our merch, Amish Baby Machine, pop culture merch. Go to AmishBabyMachine.com or better yet, follow us on Twitter at Amish B Machine. Check us out on Instagram, Amish Baby Machine. Subscribe on YouTube. All our powerful podcasts are uploaded to YouTube. We're going to need you to, wherever you listen to these powerful podcasts, please leave a review. If you leave a five-star review, it will unlock the secrets to Johnny Rage's pants. What are the pants? What do you wear? Your bows or what do you wear in there, Johnny Rage? Your bows. Take me back. uh... Yes. (laughs) Yes. So yes, make sure you follow us on Twitter, all the internets, wherever you are, make sure you follow us and check out our powerful merch. It's, it's wonderful. Do you want to get in any plugs there? Mike Rez? Um, yeah, if you go to, uh, my T public store and search, uh, Mike Rez radio or 945 show, you can, you can find yourself some awesome 945 show merch. I know nobody can see it, but YouTube, but this is the, the backwards version of one of the 945 show shirts. Whoa, look at that. This is yeah. like, uh, it's a doodle of a, an, an alarm clock. Yeah. It's like crisscross backwards. Right. Oh, yes. Yes. Powerful. Another, another great reference. Now, Johnny Rage, why are we just seeing your eyes right now? What is that? Yeah, I was kind of doing my impersonation of, remember that uh, sitcom where the guy would never look over? The, this is about how much he saw. Uh, <laughs> home uh, improvement? Uh, yeah, home improvement. <laughs> That's what I was trying to do here. Powerful. Not reveal, not reveal my true beauty. Well, this was a powerful uh, show today because we uh, got two of the most powerful uh, broadcasters in podcasting. Is it podcasting, broadcasting, whatever you want to call it. Well, all I know, Diggs, all I know is I can't wait till we can go back to the days where I only have to wash my hands occasionally, you know? No, I know. Screw this bathing and stuff and distancing and I need to hug people. I'm a <laughs> hugger. <laughs> oh, you must be struggling, buddy. Yes. I, I need, you need a, a dog. Yes. You need a dog for moments like this. Yeah, the Amish Wolfhound, yes. I want to thank everyone that uh, listened tonight. It was a very powerful episode. I want to thank Johnny Rage. Thank you, Johnny Rage. It's a pleasure. I want to thank Mike Rez. You're welcome. Thanks for having both of us on. And until next time, you've just enjoyed the Amish Baby Machine Pop Culture Podcast. Thank you for listening to the Amish Baby Machine Pop Culture Podcast. It is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and everywhere else fine podcasts are found. Please support our podcast through Patreon and shop our merch at AmishBabyMachine.com. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. This has been an Amish Baby Machine production. 